Welcome back to more build footage. We are continuing work on the arches in the Great Hall. So, making adjustments here. Now I've got all four of these adjusted and I'm raising them up so that I can set the pieces in below so that they kind of clip into the piece below. Moving the whole thing down just a little bit so I can work on it. So I'm using that floor piece that was parallel to the direction that I wish to move it because I wanted to keep the entire arch in the same plane. So that's from the initial template that I made that I dropped down to the floor and that's what I'm lining up on so I can keep everything squared. So these pieces actually I had to move them around a little bit that's why I'm adjusting now and the reason I'm using the floor there is because they were on they were not on the same level so I used a floor piece so that I could drop them down so that they would be on the same level now I'm just grabbing the whole thing and moving it up so I can work with it again but that was a technique that I used when I put pieces in when I pillar glitched them in individually and I wanted them to be on the same level I would drop them down to a floor piece just to make sure that they were that they matched levels And as you can see, it did get a little bit confusing as to exactly what I was trying to do, where I needed to go, so. Oops. Figure it out, Trina. So I finally kind of got smart working on the second half. I put up a scaffold and set it up so that I could didn't have to rebuild the scaffold frame every time. So now I'm moving each one of these pieces individually because they all are moving in a different direction towards the center. And then once I have them set and double check of course now I've got all four of these pillars moved I can hook them back up to the scaffold and hoist them all up at the same time
So here I'm placing the end caps, or the top caps, I guess, on the arches. So I'm just trying to get everything lined up and square. That's kind of difficult because I'm working up high and you have to really be able to see where the scaffolding meets the floor before you can move it. So now I'm placing these posts to try to see if I've got it lined up or if I don't and then making small adjustments. Obviously I don't have it lined up here so I have to keep working on it. So now, because this end cap, or top cap, was placed above where I actually wanted it to be, now I have to use that. That's basically a template, so I basically have to snap onto the bottom of each one of these posts, and then I have to go up and climb around on top and remove template pieces and all that will be left are the ones that are snapped into the proper position. I'm going to have to do all this without falling off, which happened a lot. So now we are working on the curved stairs. So this was another situation where I really had to kind of figure out a way to measure things. Because the stairs are mirror images, you can't rotate both of them at once. They have to be rotated in opposite directions. And I wanted the rotation and the placement be mirror images to match each other, not to be visibly different. So you'll see in a moment what I did. To measure the angles to make sure that they were at least as close as I could get them so that they would be visually similar. So right now I'm lining up the main risers and then 
the little flare pieces off to the side, that right there that I'm removing pieces from the, with the conduit attached, those are my templates that I used to create those flare pieces on the sides. And so I moved, I have those templates hooked up with a conduit so I can move them around and maintain the angles for the flare pieces. So now I'm creating the second staircase. The one on the right is complete. And so now I'm snapping pieces out from the stair the stairs that I've created. And now I'm using the way that those pieces interact to measure the angles. Here's the completed dining area floor with the stairs attached. Now I'm trying to drop it into place without screwing it up. So this is another example of kind of working from the top down just so I can pillar glitch. I haven't completed the bottom floor as I'm working my way from the ceiling down to the bottom floor. So the basement floor was actually the last part that I completed just so I would have that area to work with the with the pillars. there it is snapped into place. So here we're creating the chandelier. Another example of trying to figure out how to measure things, how to make things straight. So I'm using the circular floor pieces for the layout. And I'm going to use, right here I'm going to use kind of the occlusion trick to try to make sure that this light is parallel to that center line. I'm just looking at the way that it clips in and out of that piece to try to determine when it's parallel. Then when I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to measure the height by running it through this other one that I already have placed to make sure that the height matches. And then I'm going to try to get it to match up with the one on the other side.
of course it's impossible to make small movements with this with this build tool so that's kind of frustrating So here I'm attempting to use conduits. The posts that I have in the middle are just a measurement tool to kind of determine or to kind of maintain the distance from the center line or from the center point, I guess. And then I'm using conduits as placeholders so that I can drop the lights down onto those conduits. So these four sections were snapped from the ones inside, so they're parallel, and now I'm using kind of another occlusion method just to try to make sure that they are that they're parallel to the ones that I have set inside, just looking at the way that they clip through that end piece. Now I can drop it right down onto that conduit and then remove the conduit and it should be in the right place, theoretically. So now we're creating the railings or cordons or whatever you want to call them. I wanted to use three wires. The wire, those wires are so thin that having a single wire didn't have much heft or uh, substance to it. So I wanted to use three to give it a little bit of depth. So here I'm just glitching these conduits together. have to have them wired up before you do this because you can, once you have them glitched together you can't connect wires. Now I'm lining up this post as best I can to the lines on the floor to get it roughly parallel. And I'm going to drop these conduits right into the top portion of it. So the posts are, they have kind of soft ends, I guess, so you can clip into the top and the bottom, but the centerpiece, not so much. And then you see that conduit right there on the one that I've already created. That's just a marker to indicate which way the conduits inside are facing. When you place these, the way the wires come out and attach to the next post, if you have them the wrong way around and you have the next one at a higher level, it can protrude through the top of the post, which looked kind of funky, so that's just why I had this marked like that.
so now I'm just pillar glitching these into place. Just put them on a floor piece, dragged them in, set them up high enough where I could get to them, and then put each one into place. So, this is the creation of the bar. I've got everything pretty much lined up. Now I'm just going to complete the construction. So this is kind of a long process. Wouldn't blame you if you wanted to fast forward through it. It goes on for quite a while, but... I just basically pillar glitched all the floor pieces so that there was the right spacing and then used the template for the straight row of posts to create the template that you see hanging above. Now you may be wondering why did I do this? right in front of this barn or whatever structure this is. There's actually a pretty good question. I kind of got cramped up here, but I was, I was actually using the interior floor to try to line things up. So there was a little bit of reason to my madness here, but in a moment I'll get comically stuck trying to figure out how to work my way through these doors that are slightly narrower than what I'm trying to build.
So, what I found out was that those soft ends on the pillars that I talked about will not support placed objects. So if I wanted to put it in coal bottles, I was going to have to glitch in some shelves. And that's what I'm doing here. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this until I tried to actually place something on it, so I had to do it after I put the bar into the structure. But it wasn't the end of the world, it was just minor inconvenience. So this was kind of a sticky spot trying to get both the set of dressers that I'm using here, the same ones, I had to drop them, drop a floor down so that I get the right height for both the bar in front that the settler is standing in front of and the display bar behind. So I was kind of trying to use the same space to do two things, which was a little bit tight, but I managed to work it out. So here I'm creating another rounded post structure. I had rounded structures of different sizes. And I think these are for the small lights. Now this is another technique that I used to rotate things around a single point. That can be really difficult when you do it with a post. If you set it, set the post on the end, then the item will rotate around that post, not rotate around a point. But if you, if you look at the top of these cement pillars, there's actually a texture. It's like a little tiny crack, and it's basically right in the middle of that post. So it's really handy to use that as a point to rotate around and here I'm just grabbing these warehouse posts to try to rotate them around and now we're gonna build the lights these are the ones I think these are the ones that went into the library I'm just trying to center the light inside or center the bulb inside the light I guess.
So I wanted wires hang down. It ended up not being terribly visible. So it's probably a lot of work for not much payoff. But that's what I'm doing here is connecting the conduits, wiring them up. I'm going to place this conduit inside the light. And the second one I'm going to place alongside and carry it along with. And then once I get inside, I'm going to do my best to get that second one up into the ceiling so that the wire hangs straight down from the ceiling to the light fixture. So now they're connected, I used a bunch of smaller conduits just so I could pull one out if I wanted to move things separately. And actually this is the one that I placed in the Great Hall. I've got some concrete posts or pillars set up over there just to try to line things up. But I had to do this multiple times. So here I'm just filling in one of the walls down in the basement area above the top of the entrance to the grotto. So this is another template that I use to create a pillar section of a specific height. And this one was three posts wide. But it's the same, same concept. So this is working on the kind of circular window type pieces that the that created the sun and the moon. So I've got my conduit set up so that I can glitch pieces up and down at, to the same height on each side. And I also created it two levels deep, kind of offset, so that I could get a little bit more of a fine gradient to create the circular form without too much jaggedness. And now I'm using the first one as a template to create multiples of the same shape. So the original is on the right and it's actually 
being destroyed, I'm pulling it apart as I work on it, but then I can create multiple copies at the same time. Finally, just pillar glitching a post piece into a wall.